If he's used to people calling him monkey, by all means, enjoy that. But for me, I'm going to stand up for the black woman who is standing up against the white supremacy. Well, how do you know they're white supremacists? How do you know they're white supremacists? How do you know they're white supremacists? Do you remember seeing this video from the campus of Ole Miss University? Now, this is when uh, some of those frat guys came out and they were heckling and jeering at the pro-Hamas, anti-Israel protesters on their campus. Uh, you'll remember this guy, right, in the overalls, right? Well, as I show you this video, look on the right-hand side of your screen. You're going to see a gentleman in a black shirt come on. It happens for just two seconds. But this guy in a blue shirt for two seconds has apparently become the most important thing any of us has to think about, talk about, or care about when it comes to these, these protests that we're seeing on college campuses. Watch. There it was. All right, so let me just break down what you just saw. Then again, understand something. This is the only thing that matters to the media right now. That moment that you just saw. Uh, the woman to your left there being restrained by police officers, she calls herself a journalist, except she, with her camera, was emerging from the uh, side of the lawn that had the protesters and was coming right at the counter protesters with her camera. And as you can see, being very combative and argumentative. And the frat boys were being, well, frat boys. In fact, I'm seeing a lot of beverages involved. There may have been one or two adult beverages. It is the SEC. It is springtime. It's the last couple of weeks of the school year. And did I mention they are frat boys? And the guy on the right jumped up and down and... We are told that he was imitating a monkey or ape of some kind in a racist, derogatory way toward the, the journalist. Right? And now we've got a controversy. But the controversy has blown up into, well, something rather incredible. That not that guy is a racist and a problem. And by the way, he's been expelled from his fraternity for that that little two-second moment that you just saw. Not just that that guy is a racist. Uh, no, also the fraternities are all racist white supremacists. And oh, by the way, so is the entire university, Ole Miss University, is full of white supremacists and racists. And by the way, anyone who doesn't agree with the intifada that is being demonstrated on these campuses unlawfully full of vandalism and God knows what and chance of anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish sentiment. If you don't agree with them, then you're a bigoted, racist, white supremacist too. That's what the media has done with this. That's what the left has done with this. So witness this debate that happened on Todd Starnes' show on Newsmax right here, where two people squared off. The first person you'll see thinks exactly what I just told you because of that guy for two seconds. And watch how this debate unfolds, where they actually have someone, uh, this is a debate between two African-American men, one who just echoed what I told you about how we're all racist, and the other one who says, you're full of crap. Well, I wanna bring into the conversation Malik Abdul, who is a Republican strategist, and also Robert Patillo, who is a Democrat strategist. Welcome to you both. And uh, gentlemen, the way this works, uh, you know, you can jump in and interrupt if you want to. I will try my best to play uh, the referee or at least guide us through the conversation here. But Robert, I want to start with you. What's the big story to you coming out of Ole Miss? Uh, well, I think if you play the audio of the video, it's very clear. The young woman involved is a, a journalist who was trying to cover these protests. Um, the fraternity brothers are calling her Lizzo, who is a plus-size entertainer, um, to make jokes about her weight. Then they start jumping up and down and making monkey noises at her while clapping their hands. Um, this is an old Miss tradition. Remember, it's up until only a few years ago that Johnny Rebel was the old Miss mascot. If you look at video of old Miss football games in the 1950s and 60s, it was Confederate battle flags being uh, waved in the stadium. But I think this is very much what happens when white supremacists use the cover of social justice issues in order to execute their own plans and their own uh, activities. Well, hold on a second. And this well, is with well, let me jump in here on that one, Robert. Let me jump in on that one because the, the young woman uh, actually did an interview with local media. 
she acknowledged that she is the one who started the back and forth between the two groups here. And as you can see in the video, she was, she was going forward towards this group when the police stopped and intervened. So again, she's the one, she acknowledges that she started it and she was giving as much as she was getting there. You, you're damn matter? right she was. Yeah, you're, you're damn right she was. And I'm glad she did because we're not a generation that's scared of white supremacists anymore. We're not going to back down when someone starts calling well, how do you know they're white supremacists? Well, 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 how do you know they're white supremacists? How do you know they're white supremacists? supremacists? Because when someone starts jumping up and down and calling a black woman a monkey, that's exactly what they're doing. And you can defend None. that if you right. want to, right. but we will not give any Nobody shelter. Nobody call her a monkey. We Nobody will not call, give who any her a shelter monkey? or any quarter to anyone who called calling a, a black woman a monkey. They called her a monkey. Nobody did that. up and down. And that's the clear evidence that we have. And if you no, want to be on the one side person, of the wrong side of history, that's what Robert, it will be. But we Robert, will, we hold will on. Oh, all, all the tropes. Uh, wrong side of history. It's always right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Be, being on the side of the state of Israel is not being on the wrong side of history. But you see what he's doing here. Uh, first, they, they called her a monkey, which, of course, nobody called her anything. Well, they called her Lizzo, which actually is kind of humorous. Uh, but it has nothing to do with her race. Um, but then they, they, no, it's, it's, as Starnes is trying to point out, it's one guy and he didn't call her anything. He behaved in a fashion that, I mean, I don't know if he's even admitted. Yes, that's right. I was jumping up and down like an ape or chimpanzee. By the way, maybe I'm being pedantic, but there is a difference between a monkey and an ape. And, and objectively speaking, his behavior was ape-like and not monkey-like, but I'll set it aside right now. I don't want to split hairs. Uh, this person now, though, extrapolates it to, as you heard, the entire university is racist and full of white supremacists. After all, it's Mississippi. And, oh, by the way, they called her a monkey, which there's no they here. It's one person. And nobody was called a monkey. But that said, by the way, if this guy was mocking this woman and making ape-like noises, that's stupid. It's wrong could even very well be racist, although I don't know what's in his heart. You know, uh, to be racist is to make a stereotypical statement about an entire group of people. He might have just been pissed off at this one woman and wanted to do something really real. Have you ever been really pissed off at one person and you do something or say something that you know will hurt their feelings? That doesn't mean that you feel a certain way about the entire group group or category that that person happens to belong to. And again, I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying that unlike this guy, I'm not ready to leap to every conclusion that needs to be drawn. It could be that this guy, who again, if this, if that was what was in his heart, it's wrong, it's evil, it's terrible. I don't need to excuse anybody who's thinking that. But it could be that he just said, oh, they're all calling her fat, but maybe I can do this and that'll piss her off too, because she's coming at us. And so I'm now going to insult her. You can't then connect that dot to think this is how he thinks about every single person of a race, right? That would be wrong. Uh, but let's watch the debate go on further because th it's a good one. Here, so you're going to individuals who Robert, do so. Let me explain so this to you. You're going to keep talking, but I want you to. Ex I want to explain this to you. One person, one student did that. Now I want you. Now Malik, I want to bring you into the conversation here. What you just saw there at the University of Mississippi, is that a sign of white supremacy, as Robert just alleged here? Well, unless Robert is referring to the three seconds from when we actually saw the gentleman, it was three seconds of about a 54-second clip. There weren't people actually um, cheering or even praising anything. I don't. If you actually look at the video, it's pretty clear that people weren't even paying attention to this guy. The fraternity did what it was supposed to do. It said that it condemned the racist actions, and it kicked him out. But this is the strategy of the left. Of course, now it has to be about race, because one guy in a sea of many guys one guy for three seconds did something that the fraternity that he belonged to considered racist. But what I would like to see is this same sort of energy, this same sort of calling out the other side when it actually refers to black Republicans. Just last week, it was Representative Donalds who was called in Uncle Tom. I didn't see this sort of anger. I didn't see this sort of even concern when it is him Senator Tim Scott, or many of us who exist in this space where we call coons and Uncle Toms each time. What I would like to see in some consistency, sure, 
call out this guy, the fraternity actually did that. But to characterize this as now, we're now feeding into white supremacy or even that the, the guys who were out there are white supremacists when they weren't even cheering or jeering anything that that guy was doing. It is just factually inaccurate. But fortunately, in this case, we have a 53 second video to actually make that sort of rational judgment. Robert, what do you make of that? I mean, that's an interesting point that uh, you've got a lot of black Republicans out there, black Trump supporters, and they're called every name out of the book. I, I don't see anybody raising concerns about that. No, I think you do all the time. And also, I remember remind people, Uncle Tom was the hero of that book. Uncle Tom is who actually was defending a female slave from being whipped in that book. Uh, so for the people who uh, think Uncle Tom is an oh, insult, Uncle on. Tom was the hero. It, it, you know what they're talking about. And Robert. Was Uncle Remus, <laughs> who was the villain of that book, if you remember literary <laughs> history from middle school. But at the same yes. time, I don't think that I don't think that absolves these uh, the, these members because it was one one just one student. It was one. Um, Guy, Robert. This woman it was one guy. Life. And I, I don't quite understand why Republicans can't simply say this it one, is one guy. guy. And, Malik, and, and Malik says this one guy we will throw out of the brotherhood of Republicanism and we will say that they were wrong. Instead, there's this, this uh, response that we have to defend these individuals, even when someone is jumping. Nobody's up defending him, though, Robert. Nobody's Lizzo, defending him. Yeah. Robert, hand, nobody is defending him. There are no one have, is defending him, Robert. This is the strategy of the left. I understand Malik, that this Malik, is how you guys you have, have to win elections. It was Malik, one person, Robert. Matt one person Collins. out of what probably were out of Georgia. All right, all right, all right. All right. Let me, ju let me jump in here, guys. Heroes. All right, hold on, Robert. Hold on, hold on. Malik, I want to give you, I want to give you a chance to respond to that. And again, to your point, it was one so uh, you can see how fiery it gets, and we like that. We like fiery, and it's good to have them both butting heads. But the point needs to be made here. How often over the last 20 or 30 years have we seen Clarence Thomas depicted as a lawn jockey, as 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 the porch, you know what, as, as an Uncle Tom, as was just pointed out? How many racist depictions did we see of Susan Rice or of Colin Powell when they worked for Republicans? This is you ubiquitous. When the left doesn't like a person of color, they are the most racist in how they treat them. And nothing is allowed to be said about that. There's no criticism at all, and certainly not from this guy. And, but now we have to pull this three seconds and decide not only is is he racist, but his fraternity is racist. Anyone opposing the protesters are racist. The college is racist. The SEC, America is racist. You know, let's burn it all down. Because they're dying to get Black Lives Matter back. They're probably a little jealous that the uh, anti-Semitic, anti-Israel protesters are stealing all the thunder. Uh, let's see a little bit more as this develops, because it does, it stays fiery. One person and the instigator, the young woman, actually acknowledges that she instigated all of this. Well, if you actually saw the, what earlier uh, clips, um, steals of what was happening, she was giving them the middle finger on the other side of the barrier. At some point, she then crossed the barrier. And again, it was one person. And I think that we need to do so much better than when you have one incident, one incident in a sea of what could be well over 100 guys. And then to now say the narrative now is, is that this is some type of fight against or amplifying white supremacy. It is factually incorrect. It is intellectually dishonest. And we should be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. The fraternity called it out. The fraternity said that it was racist. That does not mean that we need to actually castigate the entire body of people who were out there protesting. What this woman said clearly was part of what she was uh, provoked. He was wrong to do it. Let's acknowledge that. But let's not call these other uh, guys who were out there white supremacists. That's the strategy of the left. Robert, I'm going to give you the final word here. Uh, look, if Malik was, Malik is a Mississippian, so this is home territory for for him, and I'll give him that. If he's used to people calling him monkey, by all means, enjoy that. But for me, I'm going to stand up for the black woman who is standing up against the white supremacy. I'm going to stand up for the freedom of speech for a black woman who wants to defend herself. I'm going to stand up for the freedoms of a black woman who's a journalist to call out those individuals who want to put us back to, uh, as Nina Simone said, spare this country Mississippi's fate because we see that it's still going on Or as today. Joe Biden said, put us back in chains. I hope she keeps going. <laughs> And actually, so I think it's election is actually from Texas. So, it doesn't right. matter to them. <laughs>
I do. I honestly, my favorite part of this entire thing is that those guys just decided to laugh at him and to mock him. And thank you. Yes, Joe Biden said to put us all back in chains. And it just goes on and on and on. Uh, and nowhere in that entire conversation, strangely, was actually any mention of the fact that the protesters, the, the center of what this is all about, why those frat boys were even wasting a beautiful day in May in Mississippi to heckle and taunt these people who have taken over and defiled and defaced their college campus right before graduation. No one mentions the fact that it's not just one person from the pro-Hamas protesters. It's not just two people. It's not. It's all of them on a regular basis chanting slogans that demonize, villainize, and call for the extinction of the Jewish people. For some reason, that doesn't get any sort of navel-gazing from this dude here who really only cares about lying about what this one dude did against the you know reporter. But it's kind of ironic, isn't it? That kill the Jews, kill the Jews can be chanted. And, uh, well, that's just a political thing. That has nothing to do with race or bigotry or hate speech. Weird. Weird how that didn't creep in to the talking point.